Today I've got the new Parker P-Series PM FCL motor. This motor has an absolute BIS encoder, which is uh, multi-turn with a battery pack to hold the multi-turns, uh, connected to a Zenus plus macro drive that can handle absolute. Um, just wanted to show that uh, we've got a ground terminal here to connect the earth so that we have good uh, continuity to earth for the motor uh, cable power wires and for the, the heat plate itself connected back to earth. On the feedback connector, it's very important that the shield be connected to pin one so that any noise picked up by the encoder uh, is uh, the, the electrons find a path to earth. And uh, here's, here's the earth again. Um, I've also got this uh, USB to serial RJ11 adapter for serial communication. This is a, a cool device. And here's my stow jumper to bypass the safety circuit. I'm going to insert that to get to the solid green light here. So got the solid green light. We heard a little click in the motor. Uh, there is a brake connected, so I got uh, using the power from the 24 volt to also power the brake so that when we are uh, servoing uh, the brake is off and so we configure the output I'll show you how to do that. So Parker does a pretty good job uh, providing the motor information, inductance, resistance, inertia, torque constants. Uh, we can get the back EMF from the torque constant that's no problem. Uh, the BIS, BIS specification is pretty good. Um, there's a checkbox we have to check to get it to work, but uh, the standard uh, Xenus Plus firmware seems to work pretty good with that. So I found the uh, P-Series encoder cabling code here. So this is the wiring of the motor, 0 volts plus 5 shield. Uh, master and clock. Um, so we've, we've got the information here that we can use to wire the motor and the battery. So looking in the Copley encoder guide, uh, we can see the Copley sends out the clock to the master and the slave encoder outputs the data to the Copley. Um, Copley has the zero volts and five volts plus the frame ground on pin one for the shields. And uh, so the master is the clock from the Copley and the SLO is the data coming out of the, the drive. And again, they mentioned the uh, resolution. Uh, this, this may be wrong, but the uh, counts per rev is correct here. Uh, 655 through seven, uh, two to the 16 is the uh, multi-turn resolution. So I'm using CME2 version 7.1 beta 32. I've got an XML 23018. This is a macro drive. I'm going to set it up in position mode for starters so I can check out the mechanical system. But it's a brushless rotary motor with a BIS on the primary motor feedback. That's uh, J10 here on the macro drive. Um, a dual encoder could go in on the uh, multi-mode port, but we're not using that right now. Uh, Position mode for now, but we can go back to current mode, software program for macro. We'll go back to that. Uh, we can emulate the output from the counts. That's like 500,000 counts per rev, so that's a high frequency if you're going fast. So be careful of the uh, frequency limits there. You have to divide down. So on the motor screen, we can see I've entered all the data. On the feedback tab, this is the critical factor. It's 19 bits. Uh, even if someone says it's 21, it's really 19 bits. 524288 counts per rev, 65536 multi turn, two alignment bits, which means, yeah, they've given us more bits than 19, and we we're supposed to ignore a couple. Um, maybe that's how they got to 21. Um, and the advanced settings, you can see the error before the warning data, and 4 megahertz. If we look at the default, you can see that box is unchecked. So we got to check that box. Now it should work. So uh, we can calculate the initial tuning values. Um, 
I did notice that the velocity loop gains were a little high, um, so I had to turn those down a bit. But uh, normally, from calculated values, we can rotate the motor shaft, and we can see the actual position from power up. Um, so I'm going to go real quick through the uh, the settings here. We've got peak and continuous current. This is the amps peak, so RMS would be more than that. But the gains of the current loop were tuned. I should get about a kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. Maybe 800 hertz is fine. Um, there's a little bit of inductance in this motor, about four millihenry, so we don't want crazy bandwidth on this. Um, I set the uh, max speed limit to 6,000, so that my velocity limit it'll come up at 3,000. But this motor on 120 volts AC can go a little faster, so I set the limit up to 4,000. And I've got my gains adjusted so it doesn't oscillate. Um, haven't uh, messed with the P loop gains. Uh, those are the calculated values. But I'm going to run through the tuning real quick here. So current, apply to the current loop, hit start. Um, you can see a little bit of overshoot there. Um, I could turn the interval down a little bit, but <clears throat> I like the bandwidth I was getting out of it, so not bad. And a little bit more overshoot with the interval there, so let's knock a little bit off of that for high current. Uh, for the velocity loop, yeah, 400 hertz, 5 RPM is fine, but on the velocity parameters tab, you want to knock the acceleration down to 300 revs per second for X cell and D cell. And uh, I like to look at the current actual along with the auto setup checkbox. So current, actual current. And uh, we can hit start on this. So back and forth, hits 400 RPM, 5 hertz. This is a no load test. A little bit of current for Excel, some to run. Uh, my tuning looks pretty good here. Um, so if the gain's too high, you'll get buzzing. So uh, also in conjunction with the output filter, uh, I saw a little oscillation here. There we go. So let's pull the pole in a little bit, get rid of that 200 hertz buzzing, uh, rolling off. And we still got some ring here, so the gains are still too high. It's really apparent in the current when you look at the actual current. So I like to monitor that, not just the velocity. Um, so I'm going to bring that gain down. This is no load, um, but you know if you have a gearhead with some backlash, you may bump into a buzz here. So let's make it stiff, but not overdo it. If the integral gain is too high, you'll see some integral wind up here. Um, I, I may come back to the integral and turn it down a little bit. There's a little bit of integral wind up there, but this value seemed to work pretty good. Um, so that's that for the for the velocity loop. So here's the position loop, profile tab, auto setup checkbox again, add the actual current. 524288 is one rev. You can see the profile velocity, accelerate, run, or decelerate, get a little peak, uh, plus and minus, a little following error, nice steady state. The interval is not too high. Um, I'm going to add another zero here. We're going to do 10 revs. So we got 10, 10 revs of the motor. Uh, I can see my actual position there. Uh, so run, no problem. Uh, we want to monitor the bus voltage. So we got voltage bus. Uh, we're looking to see where we're going to hit a limit here. Monitor voltage terminal servo. That's the view of the field oriented control. And event warning voltage limited. And I'm going to go. 3,700, a little warning about my velocity limit there. So looks like we hit this speed, but we're going to monitor the uh, event of, yeah, see so your voltage limited. So there's your power supply voltage in orange. You've drooped down a little bit from the rectified 120. Uh, you're going too fast. Your following error is growing. That's going to be a problem. Uh, you don't want a constant uh, velocity limit warning. A little bump into it's fine at the end of X cell or D cell. Um, but I'm going to take this motor back to the absolute zero position here so we can check out the homing. 
uh, that may still be a little high. So let's go to absolute zero. Uh, Multi-turn on power up, this is the zero position. That's where the shaft of the motor is marked uh, at the zero position. And let's say you attach this to your mechanical system and you rotate it a little bit. Uh, you can do an absolute immediate home and I can offset it. And here I have a minus 5665 uh, count. Um, so I can go 5665. 565 uh, counts. This will offset any offset in the position. So that's my absolute position with respect to zero. I want this to be zero after power up or reset. This is the homing method, homing reference calibrated. So now if I go to the zero position, it will uh, take me to the That should be the mechanically calibrated zero position there. So this is a macro drive. We're going to take a little peek at what we do with a macro drive. We put, normally put it in a current mode, software programmed. And we look at the, uh, the network configuration. So I have an input scaling on this 15.2 um, amps at peak. It is a heartbeat timeout. We can set that time. Home status bit. Uh, there is no index on this. There may be a simulated index, but I didn't see it. Uh, so maybe not in this firmware. Use the home input. That would be a home switch input. Um, basically, the macro will get the absolute position on power up, and they can move to that. Um, there's an auxiliary data. You can use input or analog input. Um, secondary analog input. There's two analog inputs on this drive. And you can also look at uh, the motor encoder position or the uh, load encoder position. There may be limits to the number of bits that are passed over the macro for the absolute position. But if you had a passive load position, or you could read it here to up to a certain number of bits. Enable position output scaling. Uh, activate network required for amps to enable. That's kind of cool. So when the macro goes away, things become disabled. Enable mac macro network synchronization. And there's the frequency of the, um, uh, the clock frequency. That could be changed a little bit. Just uh, be careful of the range there for synchronization. Um, one more thing we can look at. This is a pretty big motor here. And maybe there's a large mass. Uh, there is an uh, option for a regen resistor XTLRAO3, uh, which can be used to dump. Uh, this says continuous 65 watts peak of 5,000 watts. That's a nice safe setting, but actually we could do 400 watts. Uh, the regen resistor will get really toasty, and it's temperature limited to 200 degrees Celsius. Uh, we don't want to cook hot dogs or bacon on it, so there's a 65 watt. Um, so large peak gets dissipated and a, a healthy amount over the continuous. Um, at the end of the day, you know, save the flash. Don't forget about that. And uh, we can save to a disk. And uh, so I'm going to set up a new file here. We'll call it T-Series Absolute this um, plus the motor model number would be nice but that that's a good file to get the uh, configuration settings oh uh, one more thing I should mention is because this motor has a brake we want to give it some time to stop before we turn the brake on um, there's a safe speed at which we can turn the brake on one rpm seems sufficiently slow and the idea is we toggle the output to turn the brake on, and it's a mechanical brake. It's a solenoid. It takes some time for the mechanical solenoid to kick in. We're going to give it 150 milliseconds of waiting for the brake to hold before we disable and let go. That way we can hold against gravity and, and nothing drops. Um, this is the brake stop tab. Uh, it could be used for if you didn't have a brake coming to a controlled stop and holding um, before you disable the output stage.
Um, that's really handy with a stove. Okay, thanks for watching. Thank you.